Hey Dodger Game viewers, this Mormon Truth video is going to be at least me answering or viewing some, some of the comments, sharing some comments because I really appreciate the participation we get, the freedom of speech uh, policies that I have um, don't change every time Jesus changes his mind about something like the LDS Church. And I might share a little bit out, out of the book I'm reading, The Secret Teachings of All Ages. Yeah. Anyway, um, just a quick comment on that sort of thing. You know, all of these organizations, the LDS Church, other churches, and society in general, are run by the elite. And there is always a secret doctrine, a secret religion practiced by those on the inside, and I mean way inside, <clears throat> whether they be generational satanic families or not. Actually, probably only in that case. But we've got secret religions on the inside of all these big religions guiding them and then we've got what's given outwardly to the masses. And that's a principle that we've had governing society and societies for, for long, long periods of time, including societies that we, we no longer are told existed. So I might read just a little bit about that sort of thing in dividing the esoteric knowledge from the exoteric religions that are used to control the masses. In other words, your apostles don't believe the shit they tell you, <clears throat> to put it in plain English. Um, okay, let's check out some comments here. <clears throat> Where shall I start? Oh, that's just a photo of a comment. Well, alrighty then. Comments. Look how these videos are doing. Thank you for viewing. Looks like these last couple... Yeah, we're getting some views here. I mean, you know, for someone who's probably been shadow banned because, you know, some some some... 20 year old girl can get on here and, and say that the church is racist and they and they didn't say nice things to her boyfriend and get 266,000 views on her first video which is probably more than I've had on everything I've done combined with like 400 and some videos detailing all sorts of LDS doctrine, cosmology, theology, changing policies, etc. So yeah life is life is tough sometimes okay <clears throat> but i get better comments because i have people that actually think instead of go oh my god i love your new sweater and do you think that fish is okay in that fishbowl i think he's abused all right <laughs> Shit. okay we're going to start with someone that I don't recall commenting before. Susan Robeson. Ooh, Robeson. Isn't that the name of uh, the guy who wrote uh, Proofs of Conspiracy in the 1700s regarding the Illuminati? Was his name Robeson or is that Robinson? And I'm thinking of Robespierre, the Illuminati dude in the French Revolution. Anyway, let's see what... Susan has to say. <clears throat> Says Susan, you are confusing the church, changing policies, in caps, mind you. Every organization has the agency to make changes in policies. The gospel of Christ remains the same. I don't understand why the LGBTQ community who was, who was upset about babies not being blessed, are now angry the policy has ch been changed. 
Remove that massive chip on your shoulder and focus on doing good, serving others and being compassionate towards others. How much time did you invest in this video? You wasted precious time. Excuse me. You wasted precious time. You could have been doing something good instead of tearing others down. All right. Thanks for the characterizations. Tearing others down. First of all, what others are you talking about? I'm not tearing down your average Moe's going to the temple. Is this the temple video we're looking at? Let's, let's take a peek. <clears throat> no, I don't even know which video it is. I've used that. That's a picture of one of my pages on the Mormon Truth Videos Gospel Topics Hub. So who do I tear down? Not, not, not your average Mormons. I do tear down what the brethren are doing because they are dishonest, and I prove it. So going back to this, I, I, I'll respond here. And I've responded to this type of thing before. You're confusing policies. And you know what? Yeah, you're confusing church changing policies every organization has the agency to make changes in policies well what is an agent an agent is an authorized representative and in this case the brethren say that they are authorized representatives of deities the father the son and the holy spirit particularly as agents for jesus christ who is the agent for God the Father, apparently. He's the go-between. And so these guys are just just ac exercising the agency that they have in making policy decisions. And so Jesus just lets them screw up sometimes. Is that what she's saying? Well, apologists like to divide doctrine from policy. But as I believe I mentioned probably in the last video or two, you see... These guys tell us that they are actually inspired in what they do that for the church, which they call the kingdom of God on earth, by the way. They say they are inspired, they are guided by the third member of the Godhead, the Holy Ghost, through the gift of the Holy Ghost and the mantle of their priesthood, their apostleship, their high and holy calling to run the kingdom of God on earth. And specifically, Russell Nelson proclaimed to the world nearly four years ago, and I did mention this, that Thomas Spencer Monson, then the acting president of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, president of the <clears throat> Corporation of the Presidency of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, and supposedly prophet, seer, and revelator Supreme Poobah of the Church, was acting in that capacity as president as not only inspired but gaining revelation from Jesus Christ on exactly what Jesus wanted his church policy to be regarding the LGBTQ community and or especially in that case gay parents who had married each other in the newly, you know, in the, under the new laws in the United States allowing, and anywhere else, but particularly it's a big deal in the U.S. where gay marriage is now okay. I guess everywhere. I mean, they started where? A few places like Hawaii and Connecticut or some shit like that, Vermont. And now it's, it's a thing. And so, yes, now Mormons, gay Mormons got married. And, uh, well, yeah, that's an outward statement of rebellion against the will of the Lord, the word of the Lord, which has been tempered as it, you know, incrementally from commandments to kill people that are gay to letting them stay in the church as long as they don't do gay things. But it's an outward statement. It's an act of rebellion, and that's apostasy when you... When, when you marry someone same sex when God has said, according to the Bible, that that's an abomination, an abomination. 
okay? This is not a misdemeanor. This is not just an ordinary felony. This is death sentence, okay? So that's God's policy is to kill them. It's God's doctrine that it's abomination. And it's God's doctrine, generally, that it's an, that it is is apostasy when you go against when you when when you when you when you actually go ahead and say, I am coming out and making a statement of rebellion by actually marrying someone of the same sex. Not just I slipped up and pinched somebody's ass in a bar, a gay bar or something. You know. This is this is not just an impulsive thing. It's a it's making a statement to the world that you're supporting what Jesus Christ has told the brethren and the prophets since Moses was just an abomination and completely unacceptable. So um, the fact that Russell Nelson affirmed that you know Thomas Monson had received a revelation on the matter and that he later had received a revelation from Jesus who really likes to talk to Russell Nelson these days that they needed to change the, the policies relating to gay kid, kids of gay parents being baptized, uh, et cetera, or receiving children's blessings. You know, the, the naming and blessing of children actually looks like another Joseph Smith takeoff on someone else's tradition. Read about Jewish circumcision traditions and you will see some real similarities uh, as to the uh, receiving a name and a blessing business. Um, Minus, you know, getting your tip snipped, it's pretty similar. Got a tie of everything. Yeah. Well, anyway. So, this is bullshit when we, when we try to say, oh, it's just a policy. Just a policy doesn't get it. These guys are supposed to be inspired and guided by the Holy Spirit and the mantle of their priesthood. Okay. It's Jesus guiding the church, except for when he screws up. And then, you know... They're, they're just corporate executives. They were just men speaking off the top of their head as the president of the church at General Conference, even though we've always been told that that was scripture, and that's pretty much what it says in Doctrine and Covenants section 1. Whether by mine own voice or the voice of my servants, it's the same. Also, is it 17.6 or 6.17 or whatever? Oh, shit, I don't remember. It says, uh, thou shalt give heed unto all of his words, which Ezra Taft Benson emphasized as being the way, the truth, and the light in his 14 points of following the prophet. <laughs> he was talking specifically about Brigham Young, whom the church now just tries to tell us was talking off the top of his head and being a racist. Wang. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> when he made all sorts of statements pertaining to Negroes. Okay. Um, moving along on this comment, I just wanted to say one more thing. You've wasted precious time. You could have been compassionate and doing good instead of tearing down others, okay? That that whole tearing down others bullshit gets into that, that doctrine of persecution, that, that teaching, that mindset, uh, that mind control that has been used upon members of the LDS Church since the beginning, telling us that, oh, when someone apostatizes, they are doing the following three things. Kicking against the pricks. And it's not talking about the pricks in Salt Lake. It's talking about, you know, some kind of thing that just, you know, uh, hurt, poked you when you were a slave and had these things on you, I guess. You know, it was kind of a torture implement for controlling slaves. Kicking against the pricks, which basically means it's freaking useless. Persecuting the saints and fighting against God, which is apparently supposed to be bad, even though God is a psychopath if you read the Old Testament. A narcissistic psychopath. But that's okay. If your preacher tells you he's good, then just ignore all that shit in the Bible. Or you're too fucking lazy to read it in the first place. Oh, God. So sorry for all you good Mormons. Didn't, didn't, didn't mean to drop the F-bomb there, but I did. Okay. Forgive me. It's just an acronym, remember, for fornication under consent of the king. And since it has something, anything to do with sex, Christians have made it into a cuss word which means a curse word, and no one's cursing anyone, unless, of course, they've got VD and they're fucking someone. Okay, next. Okay, so it's persecution complex. I'm not persecuting the saints. Neither was 
you know, neither was Joseph Jackson when he revealed what Joseph Smith was doing. Neither was William Law. They were not persecuting the saints. Fighting against God is a good thing because God is an asshole. And he's admitted to it in his Bible, in his book, his book, because it's his book because the Jews and the Catholic Church tell you that. That's right. So what if he can't keep his shit straight? He's an all-knowing God. Just shut the fuck up and listen to him. Next. Anyway, thank you so much for your, for your comment. Um, <clears throat> Susan. All right. Next. Oh, Rick McGee. He's talking about McKenna Denson in that video, and he said, her cover's been blown. She's a con artist. I'd just like to mention that I blew her cover October 9th of last year and said how dishonest and hypocritical she was in, in the way she dealt with me on Facebook. Okay. All right, but Mike's revealing. Oh, sorry. I just wiped out somebody's comment. Sorry. That was an accident. All right, Laura Fudge. Oh, this will take a little history. Okay, so Laura's responding here. The original person spoke. It was Wynne Richards. Probably somebody with the NSA or, you know, strengthening members committee, church members committee, trying to find out who I am. But I'm pretty sure they know who I am at this point. Anyway, he says, Dodger game. Are there, are, are ever in... It means are you, obviously. Are you ever in these videos trying to place a name with a face? Well, I'd, I'd responded. The videos are screen capture, not camera, of me talking. Now, I actually have done a couple since then. Was he luring me into vulnerability? Some using LDS scripture, etc., and various written or pictured info. The channel is not about me. It's about LDS truth and authority claims versus LDS history, changing doctrines, practices, policies, and mind control. All right. But Laura responds, saying, He lives in his mom's basement. You don't want to see his face. Thanks, Laura. I noticed you're not showing your face in your little thing here either. Um, I don't live in my mom's basement. My mom doesn't have a basement. She's currently, mm, you know, she was living in a motel room and working in her 80s. She's a professional and she's helped people all her life and now she's at my brother's house and my brother's mom my brother's wife doesn't like that even though she took care of them when they couldn't pay their rent for i don't know probably most of their marriage all right so now i don't live in mom's basement but i did stay with mom in the motel when i had a mental breakdown a nervous breakdown Maybe you could educate yourself. There is the sympathetic and the parasy parasympathetic nervous system. And uh, if you're in the sympathetic nervous system activation mode too much, which is like what happens when you're stressed out all the time, maybe when you have, like, you know, the belief that you're following the prophet of God, Spencer W. Kimball, and he tells you to have as many children as humanly possible, not that I'd want to get rid of my children, but when you're like 20 years old and popping babies out or helping your wife pop them out every, you know, 16 months, financial stresses can start. And you got church callings. Then you got building fund on top of tithing and everything else where they squeeze out every last bit you've got like the widow's might, you know. Um, you can live in a tremendous amount of stress. And so, yeah, I, I, I've gotten into that other times when I had a, I had a complete nervous breakdown um, the vagus nerve was probably just overwhelmed and when I tried to save one of my children from heroin and came back to the United States and then we lost everything in the process although he finally got off heroin someone murdered him later after he created this computer involved company he's a brilliant guy a really terrific guy and somebody fucking killed my kid and um, I was not functional for about four years, but it wasn't in a basement, bitch. And some people like my face. 
I've actually been told positive things occasionally about my face. Okay. Next. Oh, but thanks for your comment. Bitch. Randy T. Looks like he's commenting on the temple video. Good video again. All right. Let's give Randy a love right now. I thought I did that earlier. No, this is the first time I, I just saw this recently. Good video again. I do like how you cover a bunch of topics. That helps refresh memory. As for being shadow banned, yep, I keep hearing it not just from you, but others on YouTube. When I was part of a different social media platform, the number of connections were entirely a matter of some person that wanted to pr promote you or demote you. In general, I had the option, excuse me, the opinion, that YouTube is the best place to be for freedom of speech. Apparently you have ruffled someone's feathers. Some people are moving over to Patreon, but even there I think it might be a matter of time before it tumbles. Well, that's my tens two cents of opinion, Randy. Randy, inflation's got to take, take, be taken into account. I value your opinion much more than two cents. Thanks. Um, yeah, you know, the, the Mormon Truth Videos channel that I also did thinking, um, you know, maybe I should do something that, you know, incorporated what things were about a little more clearly into the name of the channel for marketing purposes. It was starting to, you know, it was improving and then all of a sudden, bam, you know, just like 90% of the traffic disappeared for no apparent reason other than, you know, I thought, well, maybe there's duplicate content issues because some of the stuff was similar or the same or in some, just some slightly cleaned up videos, you know, uh, from Dodger Game Channel. Yeah, yeah, when, when, when like I was saying earlier, yeah, when, when people get on and make their first video and it eclipses my viewership for, actually, I think I have more information on Mormonism on, on video than anybody in the world. I really think I do, actually. Um, you know, delyn has got more actual time, but there's a bunch of stories. Uh, um, so they're not, I mean, they do cover a lot of uh, topics, but I think... Um, I think I actually have the most on here. Streeter might uh, be around that. You know, he's probably got more video, but he has a lot of short ones. So, yeah. And they have like 800 subscribers that'd be eclipsed by people in their first video. Um, yeah. <laughs> you feel like you're banging your head against the wall. Okay, next. DJ David Norman, is that a tree or a cell phone tower sitting in your car should have triggered security? I've been out of the car. I went in there and used the restroom in the visitor center a couple of times. Nice, nice sister missionaries in there. Oh my gosh, I think my car's done. I may have to pause this momentarily. Um, anyway, sorry for the uh, car noise there. Well, there definitely were trees at the L.A. Temple, and uh, no, there wouldn't have been a cell phone tower in front of me, unless you're looking like in a mirror or something, seeing something behind me. I don't remember seeing a cell phone tower. The, the pathetic thing was uh, those coral trees used to be magnificent years ago and uh, you know they just chopped them off at the bottom I guess and they're just trying to regrow them and they look pathetic those were really beautiful trees uh, at the LA temple the coral trees you know with a big beautiful uh, you know orange flowers and great big leaves now yeah, where's my car man oh well, maybe that's it over there they just moved it okay great um, yeah, nobody hassled me, but you never know. They could have been taking video of me. All those families walking up there, or those young people getting married. A lot of nice people ensnared in the mind control that the temple just really moves on. Okay, we've got Kristen Fuller and her comments no longer available. Not why 
sure what she doing. Anyway, uh, Krista says, I'm dead. A licked cupcake, and then she's got some... Mm, are, they, are these called memes? I'm so ignorant. Anyway, crying faces. Well, Kristen, I screenshotted you, and you are a beautiful cupcake, so feel good about yourself. Thanks for participating. I hope you'll make some more comments in the future. And um, screw those motherfuckers. They don't know. They, they shouldn't be talking bad about you. You're a beautiful girl. All right, next, Johnny Phoenix. Johnny Phoenix. Yeah, I, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna do a video regarding you know the LDS behavioral control through guilt and this bullshit. You know the, the they call the law of chastity that just guilts people into some horrible uh, thoughts and and feelings about themselves. Um, you know for, for for having normal feelings and actions. You know, it's just it 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 pisses me off greatly. And it's part of the control of people because things that empower us are often demonized so that the, you know, the, the common people won't have the power that the elitists have. And so sex is demonized in so many venues that it really screws up people psychologically. Okay, next... Yeah, Johnny Phoenix. So Johnny, Johnny gives us these pro-Mormon comments. He says he's been banned a lot of places. He even got banned by Quaku or Three Mo's or something like that. And we've got a clue as to why. Johnny, you were popping off too much. But I like Johnny. And I'm okay with people expressing viewpoints that are not the same as mine. I just ask that people don't talk shit about others for no reason, uh, or try to, you know, or, or, or be, you know, knowingly dishonest, that sort of thing. Or use mind control techniques, except for me. <laughs> okay, so Johnny says, yep, Mike Norton is my new, my new favorite anti-Mormon. Yeah, he said Mike Norton was his new anti, his new favorite anti-Mormon because he, was trashing McKenna Denson. Sorry, Dodger game. You are now Segundo. Even Quacku blocked me. I think it was because I called James White a douchebag on his channel. I'm not sure who James White is, but anyway, yeah. Uh, so uh, you know, he's responding to me, and I really took offense that Johnny. Um, Oh, did that one get... Yeah, I think I accidentally got rid of that one. Johnny told me I was... I, I, yeah, I was his second favorite. And, and I, 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 I... You know, to Mike Norton. And I, I'd give you my response on that if I can find it, but I think I accidentally did something to it. But, you know... Mike Norton has, has way more views than I do, but I put out so much more information than he does... He snuck into the temple with his camera, you know. But he didn't do it for the for, for, for the night pre 1990 stuff. That's the stuff that's really interesting, where not only do we have the blood oaths acted out, slitting your throat and all that kind of stuff, being pantomimed, or ripping out your heart, being disemboweled, all that good Masonic stuff. But but we have the we have the Protestant priest and Lucifer. Uh, having such a great conversation when Lucifer's hiring the priest to teach his phony gospel. And, and there's just, there, there's so much, you know, really fun verbiage in the conversations there that I, I really wish Mike could have gotten in on, on that part. That and I will not be second to a guy who talks about, you know, spanking, spanking his noodle in the shower as a security guard, as a temple worker in the Logan Temple. Come on. The guy was an active member of the church and he's spanking it while he's on duty in the temple. And, and Johnny's making me second favorite anti-Mormon Mormonism guy. He's calling me anti-Mormon. I'm not anti-Mormon people. I don't like that appellation. Uh, 
because of the way that the church uses that same mind control construct, you know, associating us anti-Mormons are anti anti-Mormon people in the minds of the people because we are persecuting the saints. They say, I'm not persecuting the saints. The Missourians that got pissed off at Joseph Smith, some of them, you know, hurt innocent members of the church. But guilty members of the church involved in the Danite groups killed and looted, uh, you know, the Missourians. And Joseph Smith's doctrine and, 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 and Sidney Rigdon's extermination order issued on July 4th, was it 1835-ish, uh, you know, saying everybody that's not a good Mormon, obeying them and giving them, deeding their property and that kind of shit, you know, to the church, need to get the hell out of Codwell County, I believe, if I got that straight. Um, and so the Missourians were upset that God, you know, they were saying God gave the land to them and everybody else was... You're going to have to hit the road or God would waste them eventually. Um, you know, there were reasons that some of these people got upset. And unfortunately, uh, people get worked up and, and uh, innocent people get hurt. William Law was a good guy, as far as I can see. Joseph Jackson was an honest man. Um... He may have got mixed up in the ways of the world, as he said himself, but he was out to uncover the truth about Joseph Smith, and he did so. They were not anti-Mormon people. He showed compassion and spoke compassionately about those poor women caught up as human sex slaves in Joseph Smith's um, spiritual wife system in Nauvoo. Uh, I, I would say Joseph Jackson was a much more righteous man than Joseph Smith ever thought of being. Okay, so... This is just a little bullshit banter here, but I'm able to bring up some points here. Um, somebody else is, you know, Thomas Morrison saying, I thought you went away. Almost everyone has blocked me, says Johnny. Thomas Morrison says, just a suggestion, stop calling people names and swearing at them. Yeah, sometimes that helps, Johnny. I thought evangelical ministers enjoyed be call, being called a douchebag. All right, Johnny. It was an evangelical minister you called a douchebag. I'm giving you some love. I don't care if you're on the Mormon side. If you... <laughs> I'll give credit where credit's due. All right. Moving right along here, um, says Johnny. So what's your deal, Tommy? I get mixed up with those who I converse with. Be a bishop, stake president, nursery leader? Nursery leader. Now, is that supposed to be like a demeaning thing here? You know, like saying that's a girly thing and girls are not equal to guys? Um, I don't know about the political correctness of that, Johnny. There's an insinuation there. Are you the one always laughing at me about getting blocked? Okay. All right. Now, here's what I had to say. All right. I will read it. It may be partially redundant. Johnny, I find your lack of loyalty and appreciation for your privileges of free speech here very disturbing. Very disturbing indeed. I cannot play second fiddle to Mike Norton. It just isn't right. You need to realize I've got hundreds of videos analyzing LDS history and doctrine as it changes and covers up the lies of yesteryear's bullshit from the brethren with a little fresh frosting from the lying lips of Russell Nelson while Mike makes a few sneaky temple movies post-1990 that don't even have any good satanic Masonic blood owes, and their accompanying penalties such as throat slitting, disembowelment, and other gruesome measures, nor do they contain the popular scene with Satan hiring the priests to preach the gospel of the whore of Babylon and her filthy Protestant offspring. No, Johnny, you sold me out for a guy who said he's like he'd like to punch McKenna Denson in the face. No, he actually said he would punch her in the face and would pro would punch her in the face and was pr which was probably why he <clears throat> well, along with claiming that he would shoot her in the face if he had her come to his home again why he actually took down that video and Johnny I will not be rated second to a guy who confessed to spanking his monkey while on guard duty as a faithful Mormon at the Logan Temple 
I could start in on things that he has not confessed openly on the internet, to which I am privy, but I'm not going to do that here. At this point, I will just say, tell you, if a second favoritize to me, to such a character as Mike, and origin, uh, I fouled something up here, that I am deeply insulted and find your choice of both tastelessness and revealing that you are as the brothers of Nephi claimed, lacking in judgment. Johnny, you're lacking in judgment if you if you prioritize Mike Norton as your number one anti-Mormon. I will not ask Santa or the Tooth Fairy or Jesus to bring gifts to, de- to you until you repent and worship me properly, you blind and ungrateful little Jack Mormon. All right. So I'm just trying to have a little fun here. Dodger game, LOL. All right, see, this guy at least appreciates my bullshitting back with him. Okay, um, next. One more from Johnny. I know, these are not quite the content we usually have, but whatever. Dodger game, deep in your mind, deep, deep in the deepest recesses of your inner heart, your heart of hearts, if you will. I think we both know that when it comes right down to it, when it's all said and done, when it's all like, Johnny, get to the point, God damn it. Down to, on the table, out in the open, out on the line, out in the open air. Seriously, get to the point. <clears throat> For everyone to see, I think we know, all of us, that you secretly want to be nursery leader. Johnny, I... I I think you must have missed a video or two of mine. I've been the nursery leader. I've been the nursery leader. And it is not a calling I sought for. But by inspiration of the holy priesthood and by exercising the mantle of his authority, the second counselor in the bishopric, a guy I knew pretty well, by the way, called me by inspiration to this calling. He only called me and nobody else to help me. And I'm not about to change the diapers of other kids, other people's kids. In fact, for my own kids, I wore a dual cartridge pesticide mask so I could deal with this shit, okay? It's not something I dig. And one day, there you are, kids with loaded diapers, no help in there, And I can't even go find a mother to take care of their own child. Then this good brother and this member of the bishopric just happened to be walking past. And I'm sorry, Johnny. I I might have sounded a little impatient to him, but I told him, dude, you need to make a calling. You need to get inspired. I don't care if it's inspiration or desperation, bro, because there's some diapers in here that are stinking up the place. I ain't touching this shit. And I can't leave, so you're going to do it, and you get inspired, and you do it now. And and you know what? Jesus spoke, and he called a good sister. Uh, Yeah, the wife of uh, my appraiser, actually. And for, you know, you want to talk about inspiration, that was it. The holy priesthood came through, and I was saved from, 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 from some of the most awful potential, you know, not just potential. The entire room was stunk up, stinking up, okay? Otherwise, I'll tell you what. I was the nursery leader. I tried to teach these kids the, the stuff that we were supposed to indoctrinate them in. And and some guys I knew were coming in there. They were ditching priesthood, bro. They were ditching Sunday school and priesthood. One of them became the bishop and in the stake presidency. And he was in the high council. He was also... He's a cool dude, actually. He was my uh, partner in tennis some of the time, by the way. And uh, they were in there. They were talking about their stock portfolios. They were talking about professional football. And they were taking the kids the kids' treats. And I'm like, guys, you're out of here. I'm kicking you all out. Get out. Go wherever you're supposed to go. I don't give a shit. Where I didn't say shit. I was a good Mormon. I said, you have to leave. I'm teaching these kids about Noah's Ark. I actually believed that bullshit at that time. I'm teaching them. I'm trying to, trying to, you know, show them the, the animals and tell them Heavenly Father cares about at least a few of these fucking animals and, and at least eight people on the earth and everybody else, you know. 
they were going to fucking drown, even though a lot of them were innocent babies and all kinds of people, you know. But we didn't focus on what an asshole God was and still is. We just said, aren't these cute little animals going into the wonderful ark that Noah was inspired to build? Please leave and don't steal the treats from these kids any fucking more. I'm teaching the gospel to one and a half year olds. So yeah, Johnny, I've been the nursery leader. And, and, and you know, as long as there's enough help in there, uh, it, it's not a bad deal. Other than, other than the fact that you're mind washing little kids into complete fucking bullshit of the gospel of Jesus fucking Christ. And that's it. I got 10% left on my phone. And uh, I'll do the uh, secret teachings of all ages stuff on another video because I'm trying to keep them a little shorter. Because that smart girl that we call wife number three told me how to shorten them up. You get more subscriptions and, you know, people have shorter attention spans these days. Not that I've got the FB crowd on here that much anyway, but, you know, she was right. She was right. And, uh... Kind of like what Harry Belafonte said. The woman is smarter. That's right. That's just the way it is. So, if you're a dude, be smart. Listen to the girls. They know what the fuck's going on. More than you would like to think in your egotistical, gall misogynistic priesthood mind. Dodger out. Like, subscribe. Help share this shit, you know? It's not shit. I mean, I talk shit about motherfuckers in Salt Lake because somebody's got to. Somebody's got to call a spade a spade. Somebody's got to call a pedophile and a pedophile protector what he fucking is, and that's what Russell fucking Nelson is. Russell, fuck you. As I said to the lady who was praying to Jesus about me in the parking lot one day, tell Jesus I said to fuck himself too. I'm out.